Hey guys, welcome back to another video in this channel. Today I have great news for you guys. Today we're gonna have a little bit of a sneak peek on our upcoming um, premium course. So today I'm happy to introduce to you Complete Guide to SEMrush 2022. This is a revamped version of our uh, introduction to SEMrush 2021. So we're gonna be covering every single tool. If you're completely new to SEMrush, if you wanna learn about SEMrush, you wanna learn the processes, wanna learn how to do objects, creatures, props, environments, like every single thing that you can imagine. Uh, well, not everything, right? But most of the things that you can imagine, uh, this is gonna be the course for you. So today I was allowed to show you a couple of the projects. This is gonna be a 10 chapter course. The first chapter is gonna be introduction and then nine chapters of nine very cool exercises that you guys are going to be able to follow along and hopefully create amazing stuff as the things that I've seen in your portfolios. So the first chapter, the very first sculpt that you're going to be doing is this guy right here. Look at this. The cheetah skull. Everyone does like a traditional human skull. We're going to go crazy and we're going to be doing one of these cheetah skulls. So I'm going to be showing you the basics of sculpting, not only about ZBrush and the interface and the tools. We're also going to be learning about color theory, composition, balance of things, proportions, things that you need to take into consideration whenever you sculpt. Because one of the things, and you know I'm, I'm like that whenever I teach, I don't want to teach you just the buttons. I don't want to show you just where to click and press buttons. I want to show you how to become a true artist and use all of the tools you're going to be learning to your advantage in order to create amazing, amazing content. So this is the first chapter, chapter number two, which is the introduction to ZBrush. We're going to be taking a look at most of the tools that we use or all of the tools that we use to create this thing right here. Then a couple of chapters later, we're going to take a look at this guy right here, which I'm also really, really happy with how it turned out. So this one is a prop and we did every single thing that you are seeing here inside of ZBrush. Like we didn't use any traditional uh, modeling software like Blender or Maya. Every single thing was done inside of ZBrush, which sometimes can be a little bit confusing because ZBrush tends to be this very like organic and free flowing software, but you can do very hard surfacey and nice things in here with poly modeling, like traditional poly modeling. So we're going to go over vertices, faces, bevel, extrude, like the things that we normally use in our methods. Uh, now, one thing that I forgot to mention, most of these lessons are about an hour, two hours long. So they are like bite sized so that you can see them, watch them, learn from them, and then do it yourself. Because remember, one of the tricks about tutorials is you need to do the exercise. It's not only about watching the tutorial, you actually need to go into your computer and do the things to learn, okay? And now let me present you one of the my favorite ones. This one, uh, this is not, by the way, this is not the environment course that you guys have been asking for, but it's a little bit of something that we're gonna be doing later down the line, which is another like small secret that I can share with you. We're doing a lot of premium courses now. Last year I did about six courses, I think. We're gonna go really crazy this year so I think you guys are gonna like it we're still gonna continue with the YouTube videos by the way so it's the best of both worlds and uh, yeah this is chapter 5 chapter 5 we're gonna be taking a look at the environments and how you can create your own little like diorama a little maquette here uh, we're gonna do the columns we're gonna do the arch we're gonna do the chains the little sphere that's floating around there so we're gonna do every single thing that you're seeing I'm not gonna be cheating you know you know you guys know how I work I show you every single step of the way we don't cut anything everything's completely recorded so you're going to be able to see everything. Now, I don't want to let you guys uh, go without uh, showing you something new, showing you something cool, right? So what about we do a quick render of this thing right here? And uh, we do talk a little bit about render inside of the course. We do take a look at the passes. We do take a look at lights and stuff. But you guys know that usually a good render will come out from other softwares, right? So a lot of people have asked, well, how can we like bring this thing into a marmoset uh, in the most efficient way. And one of the best ways to do it is through decimation. So today we're going to talk a little bit about Decimation Master, which is a plugin that's been inside of Sivers for a long time now, more than 10 years. And it's this one right here. So if you go into C plugin and Decimation Master, it's this one right here. So I'm going to hit this button that says pre-process all, and it's going to pre-process all of the subtools that we have uh, right now in our scene. And what it does is it analyzes the object. It, it checks around through the object and sees where the detail is, like where does the object in the sculpture has more detail. The more intense or the, or the bigger the object is, the longer this might take. Um, not enough memory. That's weird. There we go. There's been like a weird error lately with like the all the same feature and stuff. Uh, but yeah, let's just wait for this to finish. And there we go. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell decimate this to 20%, I think it's a good number, and it will reduce the amount of polygons that the object has so that other softwares such as Maya, Blender, even Unreal Engine uh, now with Nanite can read this guys. Can uh, the not yet pre-computed, really? Okay, I'm gonna do something different here. I'm gonna go merge down. I'm just gonna say merge visible so that all of the skull parts are merged in a single tool. And now I should be able to do pre-process current. Hopefully we do have enough um, memory for this thing right here. 
you know what, let me let me cancel this because I was doing some here. I'm going to delete cache. There we go. Make sure that we don't have any any cache right here. So we're going to pre-process current. And now what this is going to do again, it's going to analyze the whole surface and wherever there's more detail, it's going to reduce that detail. And you will, you're will you going to have like bigger triangles on, on like flatter and, and like bigger surfaces and smaller triangles where there's more detail on your object. So this is what we do to reduce the amount. We do this with bakes and everything, but right now we're going to use it to export this out of Seabridge, which is one of the big things that I want you guys to get from this. Seabridge is a really, really complete like software. You're going to be able to do a lot of really cool things. However, it is important that you understand that usually Seabrush is just one part of the whole pipeline. So let's do decimate current now. Oh my God, that's weird. Let me pause real quick, make sure that we have enough memory and I'll be right back. There we go. We should be good now. I think I had like a really big undo history or not a quick save file. It was like five gigabytes. And for some reason, it's saving it on my on my main drive. And that's why we ran out of memory. I was only running at 100 megabytes. So uh, that's a no, no. So there we go. Hopefully this will work now. Um, and yeah, I mean, decimation will allow us, as I was mentioning, Seabrush is usually one part of the whole process. So even though you're going to be in Seabrush quite a bit, like my, uh, nowadays for me, whenever I'm doing any, any client work, I'm about 70-10% of my time inside of Seabrush and then like 10% in Maya and 20% in Substance Painter. That's usually my, my workflow. So you are going to be a lot of time in C inside of Seabrush, uh, but you still need to understand that this uh, plays a major role in other production pipelines. So I'm going to export this and I'm actually going to include this guy on your folder. So let's go to chapter... This was chapter two, in case you guys want to play it with this one. Now, I'm not gonna be doing any like weird promotion with Marmoset, we're just gonna do a traditional like three point light setup and uh, get a very, very nice render out of this uh, skull. So, but I'm just gonna mention that we do have one Marmoset course out there. So if you wanna check it out, just go into our, and into our description down here, there we go. So another thing, guys, remember this weekend, we are going to have our portfolio review. There are a few submissions now. Uh, if we see that the submissions are not as, uh, like it's not a huge amount less, like what we had last time or what we had the last couple times, we'll probably just have one day of, of uh, reviews and then uh, we'll do the next one on the end of, of the month, okay? So you guys can work on your stuff. So there we go. Let's add a new material here. I'm going to add just a simple material and let's add like this sort of like bone material. So I'm going to go with like this yellowish like light orangey yellowish color. And we definitely want to increase the roughness so it's not as like super shiny. I'm gonna go into my sky and let's change the preset to something a little bit more interesting like this abandoned house attic. I usually don't like using aiming sky, let's use color and let's use like a, like a dark color. There we go. I'm really gonna bring the brightness down because I wanna do like some traditional lights over here. So I'm gonna do one light here, that's the, the basic three point light setup. So that was gonna be like my main light. I'm gonna increase the diameter so that the shadows are a little bit softer. Not super soft, just a little bit softer. And then we're gonna have a field light over here. There we go, that's gonna make sure that my shadows are not as dark. That one's a little bit too high though. Let's go like about there. Intensity is usually a little bit lighter here because we do wanna have shadows but just not as intense, not as dark. And then finally we usually have like a rim light over here which is gonna give us this very nice like shine on the back. We're gonna change colors here. Let's do like a, like a blue color. There we go. Now the magic, of course, we're gonna go into render and we're gonna use ray tracing, which is gonna give us like realistic shadows and, and bounces pretty much all the way around. I'm gonna go to my camera. Right now we're using a focal length of 28, which is really narrow. So I'm gonna go with like a 55, so it's a little bit more, uh, more interesting, more solid. So there you go, look at that. And uh, by the way, in Seabrush, I'm also gonna be teaching you how to do turntables and stuff. I just wanna do a quick one right here because Seabrush, it's actually kind of like rendering things. So it will take a little bit longer. So I'm just gonna do a quick turntable right here. And uh, yeah, let's go to animation and play this thing. There we go, look at that. So you are gonna be able to uh, great, create great sculptures like the ones you're seeing here. And eventually, if you know how to use some of the other softwares, you're gonna be able to take them out of Seabrush and create amazing renders as well. Don't worry, we will be taking a look at the renders here inside of Seabrush as well. Some of the light setup settings and things that you can do to create nice renders inside of Seabrush. But as I mentioned, Seabrush is just one big part of the pipeline. So this is it guys. As I mentioned, Alejandro and myself, we're both working on more courses for you guys. Remember Alejandro's course, the Blender one, uh, just released a couple of days ago 
So if you want to check it out, I believe right now we'll still have the discount. So check down here, uh, check here in the description and then make sure that you, you grab it before it goes away. And um, yeah, that's it, guys. I'll see you back tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to continue with the little chest. Remember the treasure chest that we were doing? Uh, we're going to be doing UV. So if UVs are one of those areas that you struggle with, make sure to come back tomorrow. Make sure to leave a like, share, subscribe. The algorithm here on YouTube has been a little bit mean to us in the last couple of weeks. So I'm, I'm pretty sure some of you are not seeing the videos, uh, probably because we took a little bit of a break in December and YouTube doesn't like that. Uh, but yeah, so make sure to share, subscribe, leave some comments. Comments always help. And I'll see you back tomorrow. Stay tuned for more news about this new Cybers course. See you guys. Bye-bye.